Hello, welcome to this uh, FPOD training app. My name's Nick Trigenz and I actually wrote this app and I'm quite puzzled by it at times. So if you find it scary, um, you're not alone. It's a big box of tools that enables you to analyze pod data extremely fast. And um, this video is to kind of help you get started with it. Um, what pods do is they they make a record of all the clicks that happen that could possibly be dolphin or porpoise clicks. And they're in a, um, a raw data file called an FP1 file. And there's two copies presented here. This one's showing us frequency, that's showing us loudness or amplitude. And then the FPOD processing pulls out the click trains that are made by the the dolphins and, and porpoises and that is a really significant step because that makes the data manageable <coughs> excuse me um so um hang on we'll just start from the beginning um so this is what the the app looks like um first thing is to see the menu, you've got a number of choices. You can you can use the F2 key. So the function 2 key. On some keyboards, you have to hold a, an Fn key and hit F2. On others, you can just use the um, F2 key. Or you can click on this label up here, or you can move the pointer over the top of the screen. Um, or you can even hit that little menu button over there. So somewhere or another, you'll get the menu to show. Um, and everything here on the screen has got information attached to it. So if you hover over this, um, this piece of text here, it shows you at the top of the screen in this red message um, what that thing will do. Um, and that's extremely useful, so you, you want to get used to using that. Um, so then on the left here, we have the control panel. It, it sets the time scale, which can either be high resolution, where you see individual clicks, or low resolution, where you see averages of the characteristics of clicks over some period of time. You can choose for each of the files you have open, and you can have up to six open, and what aspect of that data you see. So you've got drop down menus here. Um, here you've got a number of filters. So this one is about the quality. Now that means how confident the software is that this was a real click train. And generally, you, you use high and moderate. It also groups well, the, the detected click trains into four uh, categories. So one of them is NBHF, narrow band high frequency. That's porpoises and a few dolphins. Other cetaceans is all the other cetaceans. So it's most of the dolphins, um, beaked whales, killer whales, etc. Sonars is sonars made by boats, and unclassified is where the Kerner F classifier can't make its mind up. Um, there's a, a very useful tool here, ignore all filters, and it's got its own shortcut, the, the function for key, that overrides whatever you've got filtered here. These are species. If you've used an encounter classifier, that's advanced stuff on which there will be more videos. Um, but most people are not using that at all. Here is a very useful thing. Skip to um, more than one click. So we will see that in use later. This panel down at the bottom just tells us, uh, just reports on what's on display but also allows us to not redraw the um, the raw data files if we want to. Okay, so we want to get a file open, so we get the 
menu up and we go to this files page and we're going to go for open a file set and the default is it'll open two copies of fp1 two of the fp3 which just has the trains you could choose to have just to open six different fp3 files to compare them so that the, these um, options for how many you open are quite useful so we'll open um, a file here so data do okay open it's got 41 days um fit to screen so we can see the whole lot uh show from start actually normally it will be showing you the train species class there show from start um and it's drawing this fairly slowly because it's got two copies of the fp1 file the two at the bottom and they're quite large files um so you can immediately get an idea what's happening we've got the the 41 or so days here you can see the the dolphins the other cetaceans in this case they're common dolphins you can see their numbers had a distinct pattern you can see the porpoises in there and we're just looking at high and moderate quality here um so that's high resolution say you wanted to see if the software is getting dolphins and porpoises confused you might want to zoom in somewhere so you can so you go for a place where you've got both together and you could hit the down arrow key on your uh, keyboard and what that will do is zoom in one step and put the point where you 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 hit the key where your pointer was right in the middle of the screen and there's a marker that show you where the middle of, so it was this bit here a quicker way is you just hold down the left mouse button and drag across and now it's zoomed in a long way and we're down to one minute resolution we can do show next screen um i'm looking for this place where we've got um yeah where we've got these um dolphins and porpoises very close together so we can zoom in again across there and we've now stepped into high resolution so we're now seeing individual clicks drawn as as lines and we can zoom in further by dragging across there and this is a porpoise click train it's quite low amplitude um and we can then do show next screen and now it whizzes forwards however far it has to to find the next click train it could have skipped a hundred screens there, so it saves a lot of time um, by by doing this. And if we wanted to find a screen with a lot going on, we could say skip to more than say two hundred clicks. Show next screen, and here we we've got a screen with a lot more going on, and we can zoom in again and examine them. So um that's kind of basically how you move around um you've got show from start show next screen you can choose which file it reads forwards to to find the next click train in um and uh you can use this graph button to graph the characteristics of what's actually on display but we need to have a look at this menu because the menu is a beast and um this was the files page which we started on here is the read sd card page you use this to get the data from the sd card into the fp1 file so you put your the name of your site here any information you've got about it in here and then you 
you hit F port read SD card. So there's another video explaining um, the details of that. The filters and files page has got a lot on it and everything's got its own text up there in red explaining what it is. So I won't I won't wade through all that. I will just pick out as we go along some useful things on each page. The ones I use most often here is clicks from one a second to two and a half thousand a second. So sometimes you might want to just find fast click trains. So you could put a high value in there and it would just show you the fast click trains. Um, down here we've got metadata and classifier warnings. So there's a really useful thing here, classification warnings. Um, so uh, you can either export them from a whole set of files or down here you can show the classification warnings for, if we pick file one, it says they're only available from FP3 files because there is no classification in the FP1. So file three, say to do, the number of warnings is zero. That's really good. Um, if we did the classification warnings from OpenF files, it would go on the clipboard. So the results are now on the clipboard and we can open a spreadsheet <coughs> and paste that control and V. <coughs> and it gives me um, an explanation of what each of the warnings would be. And so there they are, one, two, 12, and the risk sum, that's the 12th. <clears throat> but this file's got none. So it's very unlikely that it's got anything other than a very low um, error rate, um, which is nice. So that's show the classification warnings. List file times is incredibly useful. So you can um, you can open a folder. You can decide you're only going to do the uh, say the FP3 files. Um, <clears throat> you select the whole list and whiz bang, they've been um, the times have been exported, and you can drop them into your spreadsheet. And so you've got like the the dates it started and ended. Um, how long the file is, etc. So that's very useful. Um, so we were on the the menu here. Um, uh, filters and list file times. <clears throat> if you want to change the name of a file set, always use this button here because it. Um, it changes the FP1, the FP3, and some files you don't normally look at, map files that go with it. So it does the whole the whole job properly. The display page, again, has a load of stuff. You can make the lines thicker here. Uh, you can change to black lines, white screens, etc. But the thing I use most often here is choosing what the graphs will show. So we did use that graph button. Um, where are we with files? Okay, we've got to get the file set open again because they were closed by what I last did. Show from, um, and we've, we've opened a different, I've opened a different file here. A fit to screen, show from start. <coughs> Okay, so this is Babatonga Bay in, in uh, Brazil, data thanks to Hernan Paytach. Um, and on the display page, we might say we want to look at, well, okay, we've got clicks per second from dolphins, kilohertz. We don't really want the, we're not too interested in the FP1 file, so we hit graph. And there, that's giving us a frequency distribution of the dolphin click trains and a click rate distribution, which is a really cool thing to have. And we can compare it with the narrowband 
high frequency species there, which is the Franciscana. Um, and uh, hit graph again. So we've got a very different frequency distribution and a very different click rate distribution. The mode is much lower. So this is really fast. I mean, you might want to look at, say, their night day pattern. So we could look at DL number of clicks there. So that's the pattern for the Franciscana, kind of evening and night. This isn't a big data set, it's only 48,000 clicks. And then we'll look at it for the um, the dolphins. And it, it is a distinctly different um, DL pattern. Um, you, you see much more striking examples from bigger data sets where you, you you get rid of the sort of sampling error. Okay, so uh, those are very useful things on that page. The click rate replay is a way of getting audio representations of um, click rates via this button here. Um, the trains page, you have to use this to get the FP3 file from the, the FP1. So if I click detect click trained in fp1 files um, and i pick that fp1 <clears throat> this is quite quite a slow process actually the software is doing it extremely fast because it is a very elaborate process and a lot of work has gone into getting this fast um, but it's now processed the whole train the whole FP1 file and given us a new FP3 file, um, <clears throat> which will be the same as the one we were looking at just now. Um, there is a useful thing here though, update the FP3 version. Um, so we'll <clears throat> and now if we um, if we open that that uh, file set, um, <clears throat> the click rates are smoothed. So that's nice if you're studying sort of social calls and so on. Um, and the, the click rates are kind of marked by whether the click rate is ascending or descending. Um, yeah, and here you've got a lot of fast click trains that are so fast they're off the top of the scale so this is a thing to realize the the graphs here show you something at the top to show you there's some data there so the function six key will downscale them and then we can drag across and get a picture of the the click rate profiles <clears throat> so the settings page allows you to set up pods and the acoustic release if if uh, if you've got that which is just becoming available um the navigation page has got a lot of shortcuts it's got some short some quick ways to rescale the graphs to make them fit the screen perfectly the about page has got all the software versions um <clears throat> A link to check if there's a new a newer version and join the mailing list for news of upgrades um okay the export page there'll be a video on this itself but this is um <clears throat> this is where you get your data out into spreadsheets or word files or whatever so if you wanted to know the um the number of dolphin clicks and the hours they came in and you didn't want the blanks you have to admit negative export it from file three uh, have we got that open um clear all export from open files um have I got any 
filters set here, clear all filters. And there's the, the list of the times when, um, when dolphins were recorded. So there'll be another uh, video on exporting. Um, access to third party analysis tools if you want to produce your own species classifications. Um, results, summary of dis displayed minutes here that will give you things like the level of the batteries, the angle of the pod to vertical, the temperature, um, useful information. Results is just a dumping ground for the results. And analysis is a quick way of looking at the whole file. So file two is an FP1 file. It's got 2.8 million clicks. Um, it's got nothing here because it doesn't know about trains. But file three is an FP3 file. So it does have trains and it shows you the distribution of click rates frequency profile etc you can change species analyze that okay so i'm rushing along here it's just to give you a taste of all the kind of stuff that's in here and a way of learning it which is basically look up here for help and look for videos um, on the chelonia youtube channel and the chelonia website okay i hope that wasn't too scary <laughs> And thanks for surviving.